Now lastly, we'll take a look at our cone. And you'll notice that it has all the same components as our others. That there's a light side, and a highlight area, and a shadow side. And we've got a little half tone in here, mostly half tone here, and then it turns into shadow and our cast shadow. When you're outlining this shape, you might want to leave some gaps on this side. This is our highlighted area, our lighter area. And you might want to leave a little bit here so that it might work in with the light that you leave on top. So again, if you make your ellipse from outside in, outside in, it's a little easier to deal with, I think. Now this one is a particular shape. We have to angle our lines. So it's best to get ready for that by putting in our cast shadow first. I think we'll do that. Now remember why we do that. We're doing that so that we have the darkest value present, the darkest way we want to go. Although our backgrounds are turning out a little bit darker, um, but it's our dark value, and from there we can judge the rest. So we've got our 50 and our 70, and you turn your paper to in a direction that will give you the best chance of filling this in. And back and forth and back and forth, so we're, we're blending, we're trying to get it as smooth as we can. And now, again, I'm going to have to come back and make that a little bit more wet, closer to the object, so that when I put the 70 in, it will blend in. And I want it to be darkest at the front here. And I might just let that settle in by itself and not do any blending. And I can put a little bit of the 70 at the front here just to set this up. And this time, I think I might put the background in first. So we have a little bit of that to set this up before we even begin. So, and you'll find your own ways of, of working. So again, I'm going to work from away from the object and then gradually get closer. This is a way that works for me. I don't know if it will work for you, but I find it's easier for me to work toward the outline rather than starting at the outline. So in this case, I've got to go this way. And I gradually made my way and I went too far. But that might be all right. We'll just leave it and see. Looks like a design element. So now I've got to go this way a little bit. Now, it sounds and looks as though I'm just gouging at this. I'm not really. I'm making deliberate strokes and that's what you need to do as well. Just make deliberate strong strokes. Now I want to start going this way and I'll go a little bit this way and start breaking it up down this way. Maybe that's a little too messy. If it gets too busy, you have to calm it down a little bit. See, I had to go back over that, make it a little darker. Otherwise, the value contrast would have been too much. I can't get my head close enough to this, so I'm sorry that they're looking a little bit awkward, but. This is setting up the cone a little bit, and I even kind of like that. I think it added something to it, to, to the value contrast. Okay, now, as 
as much as we worry about the markers and how they're staining as they go, they are forgiving because it's starting to be okay over there. It looked a little disastrous, but it's starting to work out okay. And I'm gonna just darken that up a little bit and maybe a little bit here, put a little bit of an accent there. Now I'll need my five to blend that in a little bit because that was a little too stark. So you always lose, use the next lightest one to help you transition onto the white, onto the rest of the shadow. Now this, uh, change your paper underneath as frequently as you need to so that you have something clean to look at when you start to work. This tape is... Okay, now I'm going to start on my light side. I know how dark everything's going to be that's dark. So I'm going to start with my 10 and my 3. And my plan is to leave some white space there. So I have to angle my strokes up. So I have a concept for where I'm going with it. So I should be okay. So I find that it's better to start at the bottom. I'm going to clean off my nib. It looks a little dirty there. I find it's better to start wide at the bottom and then go narrow, but you'll have to decide for yourself which which works best for you. But I think just a little dark, so a wide at the bottom and narrower as I go. And again, not just one stroke, but many. One stroke is not going to do it. And I'm tapering now. I'm starting to turn in on it so that I'm doubling up my strokes at the top and the bottom, I got the short end here, should have had the wide end ready for my 30. I'm gonna put a nice stroke in like that and I can blend it in a little bit. And I can swoop around like this so that I get a little bit of reflected light on the edge. So that's not too bad. And I should just probably leave it now. Let it be. Maybe one more stroke here. Just one all by itself set aside from the others. Okay. Now I'm going to start on my shadow side. I'll start with my 30 this time, not my 50. got to start tapering right away. So I'm aiming for the top, trying to go from wide to narrow. That's my whole goal here is to go from wide to narrow so I don't put the center in the wrong place. And you have to turn it around, otherwise you won't be able to tell what you're doing. slide some 50 on although it's looking pretty much like the 30 right now I've got to let it dry a bit clean up my bottom edge now I put some 10 in I think it would suit it over here so often you have to judge what to do next by the values that are already on the page so you have this these not really rules, but you have these suggestions I'm giving you. But ultimately, if you, for example, like really, really dark values, you won't be happy with this. You want to use, you want to go in there and, and get it really dark in the shadow. So that's what you need to do. And you'll do it naturally just by overlaying and overlaying until you have something that you like. So. The guidelines are just to help you, since this is essentially new for everyone. They've never done this before, so it's just some place to start. There's the 70 now. Got to be really careful with this one 
got to get it right the right shape or wider at the bottom narrower at the top clean that up a little bit it's a little drier than my other markers so I have to be careful using it better to go back to the 50 that's what happens when the markers get dry they begin to look light lighter than they are so I just think it needs one little bit more since I've got so much dark in other places I'm going to just put one little extra stroke of 30 in here just to even though it's dried I can go in and put a little bit more 30 now would it absolutely must have and I'm going to try to use my pen this time is a little bit of white along the outer edge remember you can run this along your finger if it's to get it going again it just kind of dries up I think the ink kind of dries so I need to clean up this edge so I'm going to go in and do that and it puts down beads of color it doesn't exactly put down something even it's kind of a little bit of beads of color of white not color really but I go back to my colored pencil and that's how I would leave that one and even though I've got some unusual things that took place I think it's it's good enough Got a funny dot right there. Can clean that up. 